Hi guys, Legend of All 101 here once again, bringing you another reaction video to literally one of my favorite YouTubers, Saiyan Scholar, yo. Saiyan Scholar up in here, yo. Here's another what if video. What if Goku and Vegeta teamed up before Namek? So we're gonna get into this show. We're gonna react to this guy's amazing artwork, yo. Amazing piece of YouTube cinema. So we're gonna get into this show. Remember to follow me in the free main place. You can find your boy Legend of All 101, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Thumbs this video up so everyone can see this video. Um, subscribe to Saiyan Scholar, eh? like his videos, share him, do all of that as well. And subscribe to this channel, become part of the legacy, become part of the movement. And oh, press that notification bell to inform you of my next video soon as possible. And always remember to put your comments in the comment section down below. Let's move it closer to the show. Let's go closer. Closer, move it closer to your boy. Move it closer to your boy. Here we go. So let's do it. Let's react. Move it closer to this. What's the camera? There you go. Put me a bit closer to the camera. Let's do it. Let's react. Tell me you guys are ready. One, two, three. The battle between Goku and Vegeta reaches its end. Vegeta. Oh, I can tell me my best right now. It's, it's boiling over here. It's at 23 degrees. It's crazy. Had just been crushed by the Uzaru Gohan. Krillin is the only one on his feet, but just barely. Vegeta summons his space pod, to which Krillin intends to kill the evil space warrior. And this is where the change of events drastically changes in Dragon Ball Z. Vegeta begins to show no fear of his death and tells Krillin to hurry up and do it. Strike him down. If he's going to die, he's going to die like a warrior on the battlefield after giving his all. Die Goku like interrupts boss. Krillin and explains why he should let Vegeta live. But Vegeta overhears Krillin mumbling and says that merciful garbage will not save them in the grand scale of things. They are all done for. And this is the end of the Great Saiyan race because that clown Kakarot has no chance to make a difference. Goku hears this and looks over wondering what Vegeta is talking about whilst Krillin is struggling to make a decision. But Vegeta is not pulling himself into the space pod. He is waiting for his death like the prince he is, accepting it's over. However, Goku shouts to Vegeta to tell him what he meant by that. It's Freezer, you fool. Don't you get it? You thought I was a challenge, but you'll get bulldozed and the entire legacy of the Saiyan race dies with a low-class mockery like yourself. I am the one who was supposed to put an end to Freezer's reign, but now it seems that day is not meant to be. And he knows that this Earth and the Dragon Balls on a distant planet. So it's only a matter of time before he turns up here, immortal, and slaughter every last one of you. Goku looks concerned and realizes <laughs> that could be a major problem in the long run if he doesn't act on it. He asks who this Freezer is and if he's done bad things, and Vegeta summarized it quickly. That he is under his orders and is a tyrant, the most evil being in the Lord universe, Freezer. and shows no mercy to innocence. But Vegeta needed the immortality to stand a chance against Freezer to use his Saiyan abilities to grow stronger without dying. Goku mentions that he was eager to face Vegeta again in battle to settle the score, but now with his Freezer guy in the picture, it seems there were even more challenges he could not wait to face. This is where North Kai intervenes and tells Goku to stop being ridiculous. That is something he should not be considering, and Goku dismisses the idea knowing full well he's not in the right condition, but starts to worry about what Vegeta said and realizes the whole planet could be in danger if not one month from now, a year, ten years, eventually Freezer will come and Apparently, none of them are ready for him. Vegeta tells him to hurry up and kill him, if that's what's going to happen. But Krillin throws the sword away. <laughs> Goku shouts, Hey Vegeta, I have a proposal. If we could stop him together, would you cancel terrorizing this planet? Vegeta struggles to laugh due to his pain and tells Kakarot that they have a very slim chance to defeat Freezer if they were to team up. But he would never align himself with a low-class scum like Kakarot after what he's just done to his elite body. Because the first thing he's going to do if he heals up is kill Kakarot. But after he said this, Vegeta fell unconscious before getting into the space pod. And Goku is left unsure about what to do next. Reinforcements arrive to escort Goku and everyone to safety and begin the healing process. But before they get on board the ship, Goku tells Bulma that Vegeta is over there and he's going to die if he's left there. Vegeta needed life support fast. There was no way he was going to just bounce back in a few hours and kill everyone. They were all unsure about the functionality of the space pod, so that option was out at the moment. This ultimately, and with great risk, led to Goku making a decision to request taking Vegeta with them to heal up, to which they all thought Goku was mad, naturally. But he assured them <laughs> that if he can heal up first and get a Senzu Bean, then he will keep an eye on Vegeta before he wakes up. 
and try to talk to him because there's a greater threat out there. The enemy of my enemy is my friend after all. This was a huge risk, but what choice does Goku have if this freezer guy could head to Earth and kill everyone? Goku's intention was to see if there was any chance he could use Vegeta's power to help him deal with the greater threat. It would be a huge risk as Vegeta is still in the most reckless phase of his life. But again, what choice did Goku have? Ignoring this freezer now would be living a lie until the devastating day finally arrives. And so 39 days pass and the events of Goku's recovery takes place. But due to Vegeta having no advanced life support in the Saiyan space pod and no healing chamber on the planet he originally went to, he still remains bedridden and completely out of the picture because Earth's medical facilities were inferior to the healing technology the Freezer Force had at their disposal. Vegeta's recovery on Earth could take months before he even comes through as he was severely beaten nearly to death by Earth's heroes. Goku and Vegeta's beds were right next to each other, where the healing Goku could keep an eye on Vegeta, in case he tries anything. But the prince's power was worryingly low. There was thoughts he may not even make it. The events of Dragon Ball Z would continue as normal, with Krillin, Gohan, and Bulma <laughs> arriving on Namek with the intention of bringing their friends back after Nappa and the Cybermen killed them. Master Roshi arrives and informs Goku of the news that Bulma relayed from Namek that there are 10 space warriors who are much stronger than Vegeta there, killing the Namekians, and probably them next. Goku manages to get the Senzu Bean from Yajirobe and heals up nicely, to which he feels his new surge in power levels. The Zenkai boost worked. The Saiyan cells within him would generate a new power. He did not give one to Vegeta for obvious reasons, but now the worry would begin. Goku needed to get to Namek to help Gohan, Krillin, and Bulma. He had a feeling that it could be that freezer guy Vegeta warned him about. Goku heads to Dr. Brief to see the spaceship he modified from Goku's space pod as a kid, but a big change had occurred. Vegeta's space pod was also recovered as he didn't use it to retreat. The other space pod has still been destroyed by Volma by accident. But because two space pods were used to customize a new spaceship, the ship was powered up even more and much faster. And instead of the six day duration that it would take to get to Namek, it had been reduced to five days. This meant Goku could get to Namek much sooner than in the original story and the difference this would make would be catastrophic. However, at this time, due to Vegeta not being on planet Namek, he would not have engaged Kiwi. Instead, Look at the way Saiyan Scholar just breaks down these ideas, yo. This this is good. This is good stuff, yo. <laughs> thumbs this video up, yo. Hey, got thumbs Dead, this video The up. moment Freezer decided to head to planet Namek, he commanded Kiwi a while ago to locate this Earth and Vegeta. To go there and kill him because he fears Vegeta is becoming rebellious and did not want him interfering with his wish for immortality. To his delight, Kiwi accepted and now... His space pod just plummeted through the atmosphere of Earth and landed near West City. He looks at the environment and spits on the ground, calling it a disgusting wasteland. He activates the scouter, but he wouldn't be able to find Vegeta's power because it was far too low in his condition. However, he did detect another power level close by of approximately 7,000 and assumed it had to be Vegeta. He dashes over there and lands near Capsule Corporation to which he sees the warrior Goku looking rather relaxed as Goku had already detected Kiwi the moment he approached Earth. Kiwi arrogantly demands who Goku was and where Vegeta was. And if he doesn't tell him, he will murder every last person around until he begs him to stop. Goku's face gets serious and looks at Kiwi and tells him that he recognizes that outfit and that's not a good sign for this planet. He must be working for that freezer guy. And he's sick of people just showing up here thinking they can do whatever they want. Goku tells him to leave, or he'll throw him off this planet instead. Kiwi laughs and tells Goku his pitiful 7,000 power level is no match for his approximately 18,000. Goku smiles and says, you have no idea. Suddenly, an explosive burst of power erupts, and Goku dashes to Kiwi and gives him a gut punch, making Kiwi fall to his knees. His scout has surged to 14,000 as Goku was revealing his true base power. Kiwi jumps up and goes <laughs> for a ferocious key-based assault, and Goku worries about the safety of the people near Capsule Corp, so taps into a Kaioken times two, deflects the blasts with precision to nearby mountains, and charges at Kiwi with a power level of 28,000, an explosive knee to the balls, double axe handle to the ground, but before <laughs> Kiwi... Oh, that's what it's gonna be. Explosive knee to the balls, bro. That's my. Hits the ground. Goku moves quickly to catch Kiwi by his lower spine. The same thing he did to Nappa. He was no match for the rejuvenated Kakarot and his Kaioken times two. Kiwi gargles. Who are you? And the reply was, My name is Goku, and I'm a Saiyan from Earth. Now to send you back where you came from. Goku flies with Kiwi to the wasteland he detected him landing at and puts him back in his space pod. Kiwi gargles a little more. Freezer knows <laughs> you're all dead. 
Goku randomly hits a few buttons not knowing what he was doing. And in seconds, the space pod door started to shut. It launched up high as if it was going to soar through the atmosphere, but instead, it exploded. Kiwi was dead. Goku looks up in shock at the metal falling from <laughs> the sky. Was dead. I guess I should have read the instructions first. But the circumstances were getting far more interesting. That entire transmission of Goku was sent directly to Freezer, and Freezer smiles, set in Earth at a much higher priority after Namek had been visited. Earth was in even more danger than normal, and Freezer was more interested in the whereabouts of Vegeta and this new Saiyan with an odd name called Goku. Goku realizes the seriousness of this situation and believes more fighters will head to this planet, and it's in much more danger than ever. He flies off to the hospital with a determined look on his face and walks up to the bedside of the unconscious Vegeta, with a senzu bean in his one hand, and a glass of water in his other. Yes, even Goku realizes that someone KO'd would struggle to consume a senzu bean. What incredible stories will happen next? Just what is Goku thinking? How is Vegeta going to react? And will they travel to planet Namek together? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Thank you so much for listening to my story today, guys. I really enjoyed this one, and I found it quite challenging in order to develop a storyline where Vegeta stays on Earth before the events of Planet Namek. Yes, it was very tough, and some storyline plots could definitely be a reach, but I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'd love to make a second part, but only if you guys approve of this story and want to see the Planet Namek events where Goku and Vegeta arrive together after training in space. If you want more and you'd like to see more ideas, please hit that like button and leave a comment of what you thought. Take care, scholars. We will meet again. Thank you for watching today, scholars. Your voices are important too, so let me know what you thought about the video and be sure to comment anything you wish to add about the topic. Please hit the like on the way out to help this video and the channel grow. It really does make all the difference. Thank you for your support. Take care, my friends, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hey, that was great. Saiyan Scholar. Gia teaming up with Goku before Namek. Okay, I like it. I like that. Very creative. Very creative. Hey, as I said before, go thumbs this guy's videos up. Subscribe to him, Saiyan Scholar, on YouTube. Get it done now. This guy's a damn role model. <laughs> and what you're saying, Scholar's videos knows exactly what I'm talking about. Shout out to the end. So, that's just my reaction to what if Goku and Vegeta teamed up before. Namek. Hey. Put your comments in the comment section down below. Tell me you guys think about this video, this reaction. And me and my vest. It's hot out here. Chill, chill. <laughs> okay, so remember to follow me in the Freeman place. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Thumbs the video up. Share the video. Subscribe. Press that notification bell to inform you of my next video. And always and forever, put your comments in the comment section down below. And wherever you are, day or night, stay safe out here in these streets, especially these times. This is Legend of 101 signing out. Peace.